for me, that work session is kind of holy. It's where I set up a relationship, not just between me and the work that I'm doing, but between me and my ability to control my own state of mind. I'm creating this space, funneling my brain into a state rather than allowing whatever events and contexts on social media and elsewhere that would yank me out of my purpose and my mission in life, which is to do the sorts of work that I do. A couple of things for optimizing workspace that are grounded in neuroscience and physiology. When our eyes are directed upward, it creates a state of heightened alertness. And this has a relationship to the brainstem neurons that create alertness and their control over the muscles of the eye and believe it or not, the eyelids. The point here is that you can optimize your workstation in a physical way that leverages this aspect of the visual system and your level of alertness. Try and position your screen or your tablet, whatever device you happen to be working on, at least at eye level and ideally slightly higher. Higher. If you think about it, most people are not doing this. Most people are looking down at their computer or tablet or are angling their eyes at their screen at about 30 degrees. That is not going to support heightened states of alertness and optimal attention. In fact, the opposite relationship between eye position and alertness is also true. When we look down, when our eyelids are slightly closed, it tends to decrease our levels of alertness and increase our levels of sleepiness. I really want to emphasize this, that there's a bi-directional or reciprocal relationship between the brainstem that control alertness and the eyes, meaning how alert you are controls how open or closed your eyes are. No surprise there. But also that how open and upward directed your eyes are will increase your levels of alertness. And if your eyes are pointed downward and your eyelids are hooded, you'll feel more sleepy, especially if you're somebody who tends to have that mid-morning sleepiness or mid-morning crash. So what I do is I have a standing desk, but I also prop the computer up such that it's at least at eye level. And I haven't figured out yet how to develop a workstation where the computer is above me. I think the only way to really do that is actually to tilt one's body back, but actually that's not a good idea either. They have done studies recording from areas of the brain associated with alertness, areas like locus ceruleus and the so-called reticular activating system. They found is that depending on how reclined you are or upright you are, you will decrease with reclining and increase with sitting forward your levels of alertness. So body posture and whether or not you're upright or reclining will impact your levels of alertness in the predictable ways and where you position your eyes, whether or not your eyes are upright, so to speak, looking up or directly forward or looking down will dictate whether or not you are feeling more alert or more sleepy, respectively. So try and arrange a workstation or a position of your body in your chair or your standing desk, whatever it is, that allows you to work with a heightened state of alertness. This is really, really key for me because I found that when I would sit down, not only would my hip flexors start to get sore, I'd feel tight in the back, etc. But if I was staring down at my screen all day or even for short periods of the day, I would start to feel sleepy and I couldn't figure out what was going on. I also thought maybe I needed glasses. I do wear readers at night, but it was really a problem. And simply by getting the screen directly in front of me at eye level, it's been completely transformative. We're now at the description of my day and these protocols in which I would do a 90-minute bout of work. Now, why 90 minutes? Well, the brain is going through these 90-minute so-called ultradian cycles throughout the entire day and night. Every 90 minutes, we shift over from being very alert to being less alert and then back to alert again. Here's how it works. At the start of one of these 90-minute ultradian cycles, my brain is not quite engaged in whatever it is I'm trying to do. Now, oftentimes, I have things jumping into my mind, I've got distractions, etc. I'll talk about how to deal with those distractions in a moment. But I set a timer for 90 minutes and I try and get a strong bout of work done inside of that 90 minutes with the full understanding that the entire 90 minutes is not going to be uniform in terms of my ability to focus. There will be kind of peaks and valleys within that, but that 90 minutes is about what the brain can handle in terms of a dedicated effort for high degree of focus. You'd be amazed how much you can get done in 90 minutes if you are focused. I use a program called Freedom. It shuts me out of the internet completely. So that means no checking the markets, no checking social media, no checking the news, no checking email, none of that. I get a dedicated bout of work done. I confess, I don't allow myself to go to the restroom in that period of time. Here's an interesting little tip that's grounded in physiology. You have a direct neural connection from your bladder to your brainstem areas that increase alertness. This is why when you have to go to the bathroom, when you have to urinate, it is extremely agitating. It can be very, very agitating. I'm not encouraging you to 
to get so agitated by filling your bladder so much and resisting going to the bathroom that you are uncomfortable and can't focus. But I generally will just drink liquids and work away and work away and I won't walk away to go use the bathroom unless I absolutely have to. It's sort of odd that we're talking about this, but this is one way in which I've learned to funnel my attention into whatever it is I'm doing. Because as you all know, the moment you sit down to do some serious work and you flip off the internet, all of a sudden it's as if the phone has a voice. It starts calling you. It's almost as if the restroom has a voice. But we all are familiar with the fact that if we are focused on something, that we, all that just kind of melts away. So the goal is to get into what I call the tunnel, to really get into a tunnel of quality work. The brain loves that state, but it's very hard for many of us to access. So I will do 90 minutes and I do set a timer and I turn on the program Freedom Locks Me Out of the Internet. If someone rings it on the doorbell, I will often shout, not coming to the doorbell, leave it there. I mean, unless there's a real emergency, I'm not going to step away from that work. In addition, I use low-level white noise. This is something that is supported by quality peer-reviewed data. It turns out that white noise, which is essentially all frequencies of sound, mixed up kind of randomly, there's no structure to it, turned on at a low volume, not with headphones most of the time, puts the brain into a state that's optimal for learning and workflow. Brain areas involved in attention, brain areas involved in focus and cognition and memory, those are engaged to a greater degree when there is low levels of white noise playing in the background. The other paper that's really interesting did brain imaging and showed the areas of the brain that are associated with dopamine release are increased by low levels of white noise. Dopamine release is associated not just with pleasure, but with motivation and craving. So everything about this 90 minute block from the low levels of white noise to the position of my computer, how I'm standing and where my eyes are positioned is geared towards putting me in this tunnel of work. And I have to say that while it can be a challenge to try and achieve this state and this tunnel of work, some days you start to get kind of addicted to it. It feels really good. It's like a workout for the mind. And it is something that as you exit that 90 minutes, you really feel like you've accomplished a lot and it just feels deeply satisfying. And I'm convinced that that's because of the release of neuromodulators like dopamine and the norepinephrine that's circulating in your system. There's a powerful way in which you can place the timing of this 90 minute work bout in an optimal way. You have access to a very important piece of data that dictates when this bout should start more or less and when it should end. That piece of data is your temperature minimum. If you're somebody who wakes up on average at 7 a.m., well, then your temperature minimum is 5 a.m. And you can be reasonably sure that your best work is going to be done anywhere from 4 to 6 hours after your temperature minimum. So for me, I tend to wake up around 6.30 a.m. That means my temperature minimum is at 4.30 a.m. You can add 5 hours to that. So that means that a 90-minute work bout could fall at 9.30 a.m. and it would be fairly optimized. There is a precise and best time for you to do this 90-minute work bout. How do I know this? How do I know this relationship between temperature minimum and focus cognition? Well, temperature minimum defines the trough, the nadir of your temperature across the 24-hour cycle. And immediately after that, your temperature will start to rise. That temperature rise is actually what triggers the initial cortisol release that you experience and wakes you up further. What you're trying to do is catch the portion of the steepest slope of that temperature rise. Now, again, you're not work, walking around with a, with a thermocouple or uh, a thermometer um, in some uh, orifice of your body, so you don't have accurate information about temperature, but you can make very good guesses about when your body temperature is rising fastest by virtue of that temperature minimum. So again, just to be clear, it's a 90-minute work bout. That's about what the brain can handle for a very intense work bout. Do understand, again, that there are going to be portions of that 90 minute that your brain is flickering in and out of focus, other portions where you're going to be entirely focused, that's entirely normal. But when to place that 90 minute work bout, when to start it and when to end it will depend on that temperature minimum. So if you're somebody who wakes up at 8 a.m. each morning, your temperature minimum is 6 a.m., chances are you're going to want to start this work bout somewhere around 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. Now, some people wake up and feel very alert first thing in the morning. They can really do their best work first thing in the morning. Please, if that's you, continue to do that. Leverage that time. Use that time. But if you're somebody who struggles to find focus, definitely let your physiology and this rise in your body temperature support your efforts to focus rather than trying to do your best work at times of day when your physiology is actually directing your body and your brain toward defocus and towards being more lethargic. It just is setting your up for success when you try and capture this rising phase of your temperature. 
I want to be clear that I'm not perfect about this 90 minutes. Occasionally I get drawn away. Occasionally something will happen or I'll go use the restroom. But I really try and achieve this most, if not every day that I'm alive, because for me, that work session is kind of holy. It's where I set up a relationship, not just between me and the work that I'm doing, but between me and my ability to control my own state of mind using these various supports of the white noise, etc. But really those supports are peripheral to the fact that I'm creating this space. I'm funneling my brain into a state rather than allowing whatever events and contexts on social media and elsewhere might be occurring in the world that would yank me out of what for me is my purpose and my mission in life, which is to do the sorts of work that I do. 